All right, a card can be selected. Let's go for the uh, Six of Diamonds. We'll leave that inside the pack and we'll get the top card, which in this case is the Joker. All I have to do is flick and it changes right into that selected card, just like so. What's good, peeps? It's your boy, Edouard Toda. Uh, yesterday's video, uh, not many people saw, which is interesting because it's only like 40 seconds. And so um, it didn't even, my dad was telling me it didn't even show up on his feed. Um, so YouTube really, really doesn't put like, you know, they basically really push long videos and uh, the algorithm sucks for anything out, 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 anything else. Um, but some people just didn't get it, you know, probably diff difference in uh, age and uh, demographic and all that kind of stuff. Uh, basically just, the, you know, interesting to see uh, who actually are the connoisseurs of the dank memes and who aren't. But anyway, this video is about um, Paul Gertner's second performance on Fool Us, his first one I've already seen. You guys were all going crazy for ages. I mean, for ages you're telling me, Go react to Paul Gertner on Fool Us. It was crazy. The unshuffled video. I've already seen it. I don't. Want, I don't want to do a reaction video. I, I could do a review or something like that, or just kind of talk about it. But uh, you know, I've, I've already seen it. So this one's gonna be interesting. I wonder if he fools them again. Um, I, I. I don't know. I, it'll be interesting to see. It's cups and balls. So it. I honestly doubt that he, he'll fool them, but surely he's got to have some twist on it. He has to have some kind of twist. So curious to see. Uh, let's get straight into the video and uh, see what he's got. These cards become unsure. That was a good act, but I'm so excited to be back. It's such an abstract trick that pen. It is cool though. I read an article I read an article about how how many times he performed that trick and practiced that trick before he got on there. It's pretty insane. <laughs> Fortunately, the trick did not fail, but this time it's going to take uh, a, a little more than that. One of the techniques I used to come up with solutions is what I call dream storming. It's planting the, the problem in your head as you go to sleep and your subconscious works on it. It's basically dreaming up solutions. When you wake up, ideas come up that you didn't have before, dream storming. Oh, is this his version of the uh, cups and balls with the metal? I've seen it somewhere. I've seen it somewhere. Foolus That's not gonna fool them. Definitely won't fool them. Foolus virgins, let me introduce you to Paul Gertner. <laughs> <laughs> well, Penn and Teller, it is a pleasure to be back again on Foolus, and I'm very excited to be here this year because I get to bring my favorite magic illusion, the cups and balls. I now, believe it I is. I know you're very familiar with this trick because you perform it. But for those in the audience that are not, let me explain. It's based on an old gambling scam known as the three shell game. Now, part of the game is that the ball is soft. It's made of sponge. Interesting and choice the of cup, cup there to the audience. Solid. It's made of brass, metal. Just like so a, whenever that ball is under the shakers. cup, you can't see it. <laughs> and when the magician mixes them around, you can't hear it. And at any given time, the magician can make that ball disappear. Now, of course... Well, Penn and Teller already know the secret to this trick. The secret to this trick is you use an extra ball. And you always hide the extra ball underneath the cup on your right. So I'm going to perform the trick, but I'm going to do it a little differently. Because I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And in Pittsburgh, we manufacture steel. Oh, okay. And when yep. I was a kid, it is, I was it is the one that I said. To do the He's not going to fool them. No, I found no way. one in my dad's toolbox. He's just there for the performance. It's fair enough. Bearing. But you see, my dad not the name was of the game. Steel worker in Pittsburgh. In fact, my favorite childhood memory of dad is the day he and I shared a drink after work together. <laughs> it happened in our kitchen. I was practicing this trick all day long. And dad came home from work, hot, tired, and thirsty. And I said, Dad, would you watch my new trick? And he says, oh, okay, okay, but first I need a drink. And he went to the refrigerator and he poured himself a cold beer. And then he set a glass in front of me and he poured me a Coke. <laughs> and once Dad and I had our refreshments, well, I got a chance it to show It might be a different one. Okay, it might be a different kid, variation because I, didn't know you were I haven't seen to the, the Coke. Trick with a little sponge ball. And I put Dad's steel ball under the cup and I mixed them around and I said, Dad, where's the ball? Of course, he knew immediately. And pretty soon I figured it out that you can't fool anyone with a steel ball and a metal cup because of the element of sound, unless unless you could cause the sound in the ball to disappear. 
and it's really nice, but your pocket. Now that's what it looked like the first time. I'll do that again. This time, Allison, I'll let you take a guess. If you watch the ball, take a guess. Which cup do you think I just slipped that ball under? Which one? <laughs> Well, no, look, I'll explain, Allison. Remember, you always hide the extra ball underneath the cup on your right. <laughs> but of course, as a whole, book, not no the sensory. You you're a winner. You're a winner. Three cups to three balls. A whole nother sense you're that you're. What am I trying to say? It adds a sensory now, aspect to the trick the that right is usually just visual, I give it a which is cool. Push, okay, it will actually penetrate right through the top, balanced That's cool. on the edge. I'll do that again. This time the ball will go right through the top See, of not before, one, before. but actually two cups, like this, balanced on the edge. But I want everyone to know exactly where the balls are. So whenever I place a ball under a cup, I'll give it a little shake and you'll hear it under the cup. Okay, and here we go. Ball number one, under cup number one. Ball number two, under cup number two. And ball number three, under cup number three. And if I take two of them invisibly, and I set them on the middle, and I give them a little tap, you see now, these two are empty. Because they've all come together in the center. Thank you. Thank you. Right. It's so clean. I mean, it looks you know, beautiful. It is the end of the trick. And when I do this at trade show exhibits, this is the part that gathers the biggest crowd, so watch closely. You see, I actually take the ball out from under the cup, and I say to somebody, watch, I'll remove one ball from the game, like this. And then I put it in my pocket. And then I say, look, if I, if I remove another impeccable. ball from the cup, Penn, how many would that leave underneath the center cup? One! Just one, I think. Yeah, just one. But if there's one there, you see there's another over there, and I'll show you how the trick is done. You see, I never really put the ball in the, in the hand. I never put it in the pocket. But while everyone's watching the pocket, I actually can slip the ball under the cup, and it looks like it was there all the while. <laughs> but if I really get rid of it, Allison, this time take one last guess. How many balls do you think are underneath the center cup? One, two, or three? <laughs> For you, for you, Allison, I did all three. <laughs> but you know, you can't do this trick with just three balls. You need an extra one. And Allison, where did I say we always hide the extra ball? Uh, right. Exactly, exactly. Underneath the cup on the right. <laughs> yeah, I remember but there's that. There's another extra ball right over there, and they're both pretty big, and they're both solid and pretty heavy, but underneath the center cup is the biggest one of all, because there it is. No, that's not it. That's the biggest one. <laughs> but I can't figure out where it comes from. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Penn and Teller, I said, I told you this trick was inspired by my dad, which is why I can't help but think of him every time I do it, which is why in this cup, I always keep dad's balls. <laughs> and, and in this cup, in honor of dad, I always keep a can of Coke. Woo! Okay. Okay. And, and in this cup, well, remember, it's a bear? you always hide the extra ball underneath the cup on your right. <laughs> so, so dad the coke got me though you are, here's to you okay okay all right all right, all right. never mind it didn't oh, nice. never mind it didn't <laughs> but that's a beautiful routine. I've never seen the last part. I only saw up to where, like, where he produces the big ball, and that's it. I'm done. I, I, like, but you just have to try, try it twice. Well, I, but, well, this was my favorite trick, and 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 I, it's a, just a treat to come and just do the cups and balls for them. And I just couldn't do just the cups and balls. I had to throw a little kicker in. So yeah, you seem to specialize in kickers. Yeah, well, I think um, all magic should have that. I mean, that's what magic's all about. It's about having that little moment at the end where someone thinks the yeah, end is there, and then all of a sudden, boom, you hit them one yeah. more time. Wow. Okay, yeah. time to see if they got it. Penn, tell her. What do you think? Uh, we first heard about you, Paul, doing the uh, the, the cups and balls. And I don't think you told them. It's not no fair. 
to say that you're just doing the cups and balls. Because for, for hundreds of years, maybe thousands, people have done the cups and balls. And it's always been a visual trick. And your genius is making it also an audio trick. And That's what that I said. And that is something that from the first moment I saw you do it absolutely blew my mind. Having that sound to do at the same time. But what people don't know who don't know how the trick is done don't know is that you found special slights and special handlings mm -hmm. just to yeah. deal with the sound. Yeah. If you were yeah. to write a book on this, which I imagine you will someday because it's so brilliant, uh, you will have to have a whole separate thing on how you make the sounds come from a different place than they actually are and absolutely be beautiful like that also yeah. in magic you know that um certain things are just compressible we all know sponge balls are compressible mm -hmm. indeed almost everything else used in every magic act is compressible we all know how to make all sorts of things look solid that are actually compressible you cannot do that with ball bearings and some mm. people would say uh when they know how a trick is done that, that makes the that makes the glass half em half empty but i think when we know how a trick is done and makes the glass half full mm -hmm. do you know that they know what were you they're talking about how you did it i think so i yeah. think they uh, they yeah we're talking okay so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Listen, right. it's now a tie. You get us last time, we get you this time. <laughs> Season five, kick our ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's good stuff. It was all classic, but with a spin. I've seen it before. I don't remember. I don't think it fooled me when I first saw it uh, back in the day. Well, it wasn't that far, that long ago. But I don't think it fooled me that time either. But I, I definitely was very, very impressed with. Uh, you know, I've actually had a few ideas, mostly with coins, on how to make. Uh, coins sound like they're somewhere when they're not, um, you know, deal with vanishes while you can still hear the coins. Uh, I've played around with ideas like this, so uh, for me, it's actually kind of, uh, you know, I actually kind of uh, really, really relate to this performance in a way because I've kind of played with it a little bit. It's not something that I do a lot, you know, as you know me, card guy all the way, but uh, it's definitely fun to do and uh, I've, I love this performance. I love it. I knew it wasn't gonna fool them, though. I mean, let's be honest here. Like, this is way too much of a classic trick. He did pl he did do some kickers in there, but uh, they're not enough to fool a magician. I, w I would well anyone that actually knows any of that routine. I would say. I mean, um, yeah, I, I yeah I think he would have. He knew that he wasn't gonna fool them. That's my guess. That's my personal idea, but. Um, you know, it, w it was definitely a great routine, so I loved it. Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, uh, subscribe. I do daily videos. You know, follow me on all social media platforms. All the links are down below if you want to support me on Patreon or want to come chat on Discord. Uh, the links are down below for that. And as always, mad respect, much love, stay lit, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!